Hi, this is Dr. Padma Garvey. Encapsulating the characteristics of a healthy lifestyle is impossible to do with a single catchphrase. That's why so many people are confused about how to eat. The phrase plant-based diet seems like some newfangled hippy-dippy way of eating. In reality, however, a plant-based diet, one where people ate what they grew locally, where they slaughtered their own animals infrequently, where they made all their own food, was a way of life for most of our ancestors. Before factory farming, before agribusiness, before refrigeration and processed foods, people ate what was available to them. They ate what they could make. As a result, they ate a lot of plants, mostly plants, with meat and dairy as a bonus on good days. Regardless of where your ancestors came from, food was always a primary concern. Food was not guaranteed and was not always plentiful. A wide assortment of fruit was not a given. Eggs from your chickens were not predictable. Meat had to be eaten quickly or preserved to last through the harsh winters. Famines were common. Wars were disruptive. I have known my best friend Vicky since I was 12 years old. Her parents emigrated to the United States from Italy in 1948 and carried with them many of the culinary traditions of their homeland. Vicky once told me that one of the things that her parents brought with them from Italy were seeds so that they could grow their favorite beans. Mr. Dadenato was a contractor who specialized in artisan ornamental ironwork. He also owned and managed lots of his rental properties. He was extremely busy using his mind and body during the day. In the United States, Mrs. Dadenato made most of what the family ate from scratch, including all their bread, gnocchi, ravioli. The family rarely ate out. A few times a year, Mr. and Mrs. Dadenato made their own sausage and supersat and wine. Mrs. Dadenato's elderly father would pick dandelions from their garden for his salads. And when I would go over to their house after school, I always saw pots of soup on the stove. I decided to speak to Mr. and Mrs. Dadenato, ages 97 and 87 respectively. I interviewed Mrs. Dadenato last weekend at her house that Mr. Dadenato built by himself after he retired. Mr. Dadenato is hard of hearing and has poor vision, but my husband and I had a wonderful conversation with both of them. Despite suffering from a bad fall down his basement stairs last year, requiring prolonged hospitalization and rehabilitation, he recovered and I saw him climb up and down his basement steps with relative ease. Mrs. Dadenato served us lunch that she had made, her lima bean and spinach soup. It was delicious and had only four ingredients in it. I don't do everything from scratch, but uh, I try to. In fact, we never eat outside. Yeah. You know, we. All, I always prepare my food in the best way I can in the house. With the ingredient, usually I use it. Right. Well, I remember when I was uh, a kid, and I would see you making your own uh, super sauce. It's right. And you would make the your own wine. It's and right. the bread, and I always, you know, I'd walk in through your front door, I'd see you in the kitchen, and every afternoon I'd see a, like a big pile of flour, or just you're making you right. milky, you right. or pasta. You're right. Yeah, there was always like a big mound of flour on one side, and like the little formed gnocchi balls on the other side. Especially uh, the bread and the cookies, and the cookies on, uh, around Christmas time. I make uh, cookies every day for the last week. So when Christmas came, I had all of the cookies I wanted. So a company come, cup of coffee and some cookies. But we, I do not, I never elimin eliminated any bread or cookies. And now at the old age, being with a lot of eat sugar, I make once in a while as a treat. Like if he's aboard today, you know, occasion. But as a rule, I don't cook anymore or put sugar. Right. But I do make bread, and I'm <laughs> and we eat bread 
and we eat the pasta. Sure, sure. So at least uh, once a week or so, but uh, I try to keep more uh, vegetable and fruit, but special winter. Every time he's hungry, he goes to the fruit like nothing, anything. Right. So um, can you just tell me a little bit about where and when you were born? Sure. I was born in San Giovanni in Fiore, Provincia di Cosenza, uh, 1930. You want to hear my month? Sure. February 22nd, 1930. Uh, I was raised with my mom and daddy until I would say it's about when I was eight, nine years old. Uh, about 98 years old, my mother, uh, there was no more classes on my own time. So she decided to send me to college with the nun, Nekanosiana. So and I stay over there with them for four or five years which they have the private classes inside. Once the four or five years was over, I lived with them, but I went outside to school, you know, the same city in, in Cosenza. And I stay over there until I meet him, and I marry him, and that's it, it's over. So when you were uh, growing up, can you describe, you know, what would have been a typical breakfast or lunch or dinner growing up in 1930, 1940? Like to give me some milk or something because she was worried. I was always thin, but did not change. I was not a breakfast eater. So for lunch, then I eat what my mother eats. Of course, I love, like you say, there's a prosciutto and the sausage or prosciutto. And then in the evening, we always had like a minestra, it's like a vegetable mixture with a little bit of flavor of pork mm -hmm. and some fruit. Uh, we had uh, uh, some uh, land, which uh, we always had pears, apple. So we had, the, I don't say an abundance, but pretty much so, even during the winter which usually in our hometown, in that time, it was scarce. So you can find everything you want in the store. Uh, my grandfather, <laughs> in the winter, we had walnuts, and we make a pastry we call a bit pigliate, which we use the raisins, which uh, we did for my own land, and the nuts. And we enjoy was the only uh, cookies we had in that time. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Uh, but when I went uh, in college with the nun, we had the breakfast, but it was a breakfast for nothing. Well, like, what do you mean? It was like coffee, which don't even taste like coffee, like, it was like warm water with a little bit of biscuit or some. For lunch, they always give us a small dish of pasta, fixed a little piece of uh, fish or a ricotta or some, and, but always a salad. In the evening, we did uh, on around 3.30, we had the miranda, we call it. It's like a slice or two of bread with some uh, salami or cheese or whatever. There was not too much fruit either to give it to us. Then in the evening, we again, we had or a little bit of meat, or a little bit of vegetables, and a salad. Twice a day, we had a salad every day, for lunch and for evening. And it was a, in this way all the time. So was food expensive, or like, you know, what, what would have been a very expensive thing for you to buy? The meat, the meat and the cheese. So. I mean, was it something that was so expensive that you would really have to watch how much you could buy, or how often would you be able to buy it? Depends uh, how much money you have. It. But usually, uh, all of the family, 
they cannot afford to buy for every day. Some they leave for Sunday, like a Sunday lunch. And then a lot of times I remember even my mother, which she was make pasta and use the meatballs and, and the meat. And she would say, now leave a little bit for tonight. You know, try to balance the food. And uh, now, you, did you have an ice box or? We didn't have anything. In, in a, so food was bought that day? Day by day, yeah. You make it and eat it, or you, so you make it as much as you think you consume it that day, except to the supersat and the sausage, anything which we put on the salt, which keeps it. How about um, olive oil? Was it? Well, the olive oil, we had a land with the olives. So we had our own olive oil, and uh, we have olives to use during the winter. You know, like my mother, they had the ripe olives, which they dried up, and the green one, which they put on the salt. They use uh, to preserve the food with salt. Like even if you want to have uh, peppers or green tomatoes, they use it, or eggplant, they use it to put on a crock with salt, one on a layer, and then cover with water, uh, cold water and salt, and put a stone on the top to keep them under pressure. And then as you need it with oil, and knead it with the bread. Now, when you did uh, purchase meat or fish or chicken, was it uh, was there a butcher, or you you used your own livestock? Uh, usually, it was a butcher. Which the butcher, you could find the meat most of the, during the weekend, because the butcher they didn't have no cooler either. So whatever they did the day, day the weekend, they have to use it. So they eliminated the amount they slaughtered. And uh, for our own, we only have a big pig or two pigs, it depends how much money, how much expense you want to use it. And they slaughtered during the winter because our hometown, the winter was very cold. So we had the feast the day which uh, our, the pig was slaughtered, then they bring it home. And all of the family, you know, the, uh, my grandfather, we make uh, a big meal and uh, get it together. And then my mom tried to utilize all of the part of the pig in which way to preserve. Like she make the bacon. I don't know how she made it because I never put my nose, the prosciutto. And we could do that in our hometown because San Giovanni in Fiore was a cold, cold place during the winter. But if you was live like near the seashore, couldn't even do that. I mean, you have to depend to go to the store and buy whatever you wanted. So when did you and Mr. De Donato come to the United States? 1948. And what was your biggest shock or what what did you have to get adjusted to the most the food especially the bread I didn't like the bread roll <laughs> so that's why my mother says oh I'll show you two all because up to that time I didn't know nothing about kitchen everything was prepared to me and needed whatever uh, they gave so then I start to make a bread and I never stopped since it no, whatever. So what, you know, how do you think your eating habits changed once you got to the United States? Well, in the United States, is more abundance. So it somehow did change, but not too much. Because I, even in the United States, I never remember to sit down and eat breakfast. Breakfast was not my strong. Then for lunch, we had the most uh, sandwich. And for dinner, we had a big dinner or like a, or a vegetable minestra or a 
some meat, uh, bread, fruit. We had fruit all the time. Then I started to bake the cookies for the children, which always I had something, you know. And once in a while a cake when it was the birthday or something, I did it. Or pie. Very seldom I use the outside. Never. Very so, uh, Vicki, you want to add anything? When you asked her what makes her so healthy, I knew she would say she's not healthy, <laughs> which always makes me laugh because compared to a lot of people I see who are much younger than her, she is healthy. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Like I said, I, I remember when I was growing up and I would walk into your house and and I, I even remember you used to walk to the grocery store yes, for because I didn't drive. You, when did you get your driver's license? Uh, after I had the Gillian Beret, was uh, I was how old was I? I think I was over forty years old. So you used to walk to the grocery store and like try to carry how much I could because I have, uh, my strength was limited. Because my husband never liked it to go to the grocery store and buy things. He would like it to eat, but he was busy working and he, wouldn't, he always complained. Even to go and stop for a, a gallon of milk. So I had usually, in that time, we had the milkman. It was even the egg lady, which I didn't use it that often. It was even a, a truck which was coming on the street when we live on Alton Street, which uh, was selling vegetables and once in a while food. Now, if you don't drive, you don't get an oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you had advice to give to people trying to live a healthier life, what would you say to them? Try to eat what you like and by help yourself. You said it to always go out and eat that. Eat whatever you like. It. Just make it yourself. No, just make it yourself. And eat whatever you can afford. It. You know, most of the time I always, I, when I go to the store, I, I look always for bargain. I don't buy always the best. You fix it and you eat it. All right. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope you got a lot out of listening to what Mrs. Daydonato had to tell us. As always, you can go to my website, www.drpademagarvey.com, drpademagarvey.com, for recipes. I've also posted her lima bean and spinach soup recipe for you to take a look at. Thanks for listening.